welcome you to Columbia, South Carolina to our Thursday showcase. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. A fun battle this evening as the top team in the nation, the South Carolina Gamecocks get ready to take on number 24 Ole Miss. The Rebels ranked in the top 25 for the first time since 2007. Taking a look at the SEC standings, Tennessee atop the conference, South Carolina and Ole Miss just behind the Lady Vols. As we welcome you courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo and NCAA champion head coach Carolyn Peck. So happy to be with you this Thursday night here on ESPN. Thought it was gonna be UConn, but because there needed to be another SEC game for South Carolina, it's Ole Miss instead. There's a terrific battle of the bigs tonight, beginning with Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina, who Rebecca is probably the favorite for National Player of the Year. Not probably, she absolutely is the favorite for National Player of the Year, and she has been having a monster junior season so far. Averaging 17 points, 11 rebounds a game. An absolute monster on the offensive glass, a defensive presence, three blocks per game. She's getting it done, assisting to her teammates, has range extending out to three. Aaliyah Boston has absolutely got it all from the center position for the Gamecocks. And B, she's on a streak of a 12-game double-double. She's averaging almost 19 points a game, 14 rebounds, and she's shooting 56% from the floor. She is the best player in the country right now. And she is not the only talented big we're going to see on the floor tonight. Carolyn, Shakira Austin of Ole Miss is an absolute star as well. 6-5 hybrid is how Coach Yo describes her. Shakira Austin is terrific in the low post. She can finish with her left hand, right hand equally. You can also move her to the high post. And you know what she can do from there? Shoot, pass, and drive. And you've got to try to keep Shakira Austin off the glass because she will be on the boards. And hey, she's working on it, looking to extend that range, knocking down the three. Athletic bigs, that's what they like in the WNBA. And Shakira Austin is one. And the only thing keeping that versatility from being higher than an A minus is a consistent three point threat. But she's hit a couple already this season. Well, someone who's always an A plus for us. Holly Rowe, what do you got for us? Well, there's so much excitement around this Ole Miss program, jumping into the top 25 rankings for the first time in 15 years. And they've done it by being very good defensively, getting on teams and trapping. So how will they upset the number one team in the country tonight if they're able to? Look at the coaches' shirts. They've got the recipe right on the front of every shirt on the coaches on the sideline. Dictate and disrupt. They've gone through everything to dictate this game, including practicing against the opening tip. Expect to trap on the ball and trying to disrupt right off the bat. Defense is what they do, and that's how they've made it back into the top 25. And the thing Coach Joe wants to do, it's not necessarily to force a turnover, it's a mindset. She's trying to get her team to be in the attack mode from the beginning and not back down. So that's why you see Ole Miss not even attempt to get the tip, and here comes the trap. Quickly able to break it. And as Carolyn talked about, it's about the mentality. Ole Miss trying to say, yeah, we're going to bring the fight to you. Here's Bree Beal on a three, no, and off and running off the rebound is LaShonda Monk for Ole Miss. Take a look at the Ole Miss starting five. Kitchens in there to try and relieve Shakira Austin a little bit when it comes to the matchup against the Leah Boston. Coach Joe wanted to go with more size because she knows the number one thing against South Carolina you got to do is you got to keep them off the glass and you got to get rebounds. She also said we need to protect our queen, keep her out of foul trouble. Talking about Shakira Austin. Well, you'll let McPhee McEwen in her fourth season at the helm of Ole Miss. Done an absolutely outstanding job, has guided this team to its first AP poll ranking in 15 years, as Holly told you. It's a team a couple of years ago that was winless in the SEC. And right now, 5-1, and one, as you saw, third in the conference currently. And riding a 13-game winning streak, their longest since 1991. 
Beal dumps it into traffic, knocked away, shot clock fading, and it expires. Nice defensive set there from Ole Miss. Great two first defensive possessions for Ole Miss. They have been able to force Brie Beal to be the one to have the basketball in her hands as the shot clock goes down. You see the record for Dawn Staley against Ole Miss in her career. Her number one concern was turning the ball over. South Carolina's only real flaw this season has been turning the ball over, and Ole Miss turns you over about as well as anyone in the country. This time, though, they're going to give it up. Mimi Reed called for the offensive foul. South Carolina starting five. Continuity from a team that went to the Final Four a season ago with Zaya Cook, Destiny Henderson, Bree Beal, Victoria Saxton, and Aaliyah Boston. That three is short for Cook. What haven't we seen from South Carolina? That's a touch for Aaliyah Boston inside. Here's Austin spinning, taking, and hitting. First bucket of the game belongs to Shakira Austin. Well, it's the zone, the press from Ole Miss dropping back into a zone that has really taken away inside look South Carolina has had to try to get the ball inside. And when they go back into the man, they have got Shakira Austin playing way off Bree Beal, hanging out in the paint. You see it here. Foul going to be called this time as Kitchens tried to hang with Boston on the interior. This is what Sheer, Shakira Austin can do, take you off the bounce. She plays like a guard. That's why Coach Yo describes her as a hybrid. Well, I mean, Carolyn, that, those are serious handles for a center. Unbelievable. I'm going to tell you, this is, this is going to be a stretch a little bit, but, okay, Washington, they have the first draft, Elena Deladon. Now, Deladon can shoot the three better, but she had handles. Shakira Austin has set handles. Mike Tebow's got to like what he sees from number zero in blue. Henderson gets a look and knocks it down from three. The time on the switch, Shakira Austin was on Destiny Henderson, but again, her main priority is clog up the middle and keep Boston neutralized. Monk tried to force it up. Could not get it to go. Here comes South Carolina off and running. Three on two. Beal into the paint. Stops and finishes. Push the foul. A chance for three for Bree Beal. Since Bree Beal has come to South Carolina, I've only had one way to describe how she plays. Bully ball. She is a strong guard. She's a big guard that once she puts her head down and goes to the basket, she's hunting points. And it's so important for her, Carolyn, right, to get in and use her size and use her strength because her area of improvement is her perimeter game. And that's why teams play off of her. She has to be selective in the shots that she takes, but needs, needs to use her advantage and get inside and use that strength. Because she's been known at South Carolina as a defender. She was left off that Naismith top 15 list. She tweeted. Bet. So expect her to bring some defense today. And this is a South Carolina team that is outstanding defensively. Boston separates and flips it in. Great nice. straight from South Carolina. Really nice take by Leah Boston, the man that could have been an offensive foul with her elbow. You saw that elbow? I, I saw, saw that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> Tanetta Johnson flips it in on the other end. Johnson in for LaShonda Monk. By the way, that depth is deficit that Ole Miss was facing, the largest they faced in four games. Trail for a total of a minute and 17 seconds over the last four games and never by more than two. Here's Saxton, mid-range, no. Follows it up and sticks it. Coach Joe said that's how South Carolina scores. It's not that first shot, it's those second chance points that get you. SEC basketball at its best, Carolyn. Throw it up there and go get it. It's like an assist, right? That's right. Well, that's why Dawn Staley's so frustrated with the turnover. She was joking with us before the game as Austin misfires. Hey, just throw it up at the rim. There's a 50-50 shot. We're going to get it back and score, which actually quite literally is close. <laughs> South Carolina rebounds 46% of their misses on the offensive end. That's best in the nation as Boston Gets a free lane and lays it in. Well, like what South Carolina's done, start moving Aaliyah Boston around, knowing teams are going to bring help, her versatility and the ability, the work she did in the summer, taking the ball off the bounce, the composure that she plays with. Austin trying to mosey around Saxton. That is a very difficult finish. That's her strength, catching the ball at the free throw line area and going. Did you see the shake she had on that handle, Ryan? And Coach Yo was very upset that it was not an and one as Austin 
fought through a lot of contact to finish there, Holly Rowe. Well, you know, she's actually got handles and got those moves for a good reason. Her dad has been drilling her since she was 10 years old by watching Kevin Durant workout videos. She fancies her game as Kevin Durant, like a wing that can really come off screens and create their own shot, and she's got the handle to prove it. Dad's done a great job with her. That's a pretty strong player to model your game after, and Kevin watches a lot of women's college hoops, so who knows? Maybe he's tuned in tonight to watch Austin as Henderson, oh, what pretty handle to the rim for two. Monk back in for Ole Miss. Angel Baker on the floor as well for the Rebels, using the Scott screen. Baker, a transfer that Coach O was just thrilled to get her hands on this offseason after she shined at Wright State in the NCAA tournament last year. Here's Monk flipping it up and in over Boston. That's a tough finish from LaShonda Monk. Tough finish and a fearless take. She was going against one of the best shot blockers in the country and had no fear. Well, that's what Coach O talked to us about with Monk, said she is absolutely fearless. She said, if we're getting into a fight, she's definitely at least swinging. And that's part of the reason why she loves her. Meanwhile, Aaliyah Boston off to a good start tonight. And there are certainly island connections between Aaliyah Boston and an NBA star. You'll hear more about it next. Go Holly, go Holly. Well, Aaliyah Boston first met Tim Duncan back in 2018, and Carolyn then got to work with him this summer. This summer, they connected and they were able to go to Tim Duncan's house. Aaliyah Boston spent five days there. I talked to Tim Duncan today and I said, did she come in and say, this is what I want to work on? And Tim Duncan was quick to point out, because he doesn't want to take credit for the improvement she's made. It is all about all the work that she has put in and worked on. She just wanted to get a little better. Well, here is Aaliyah talking about what she learned from Tim Duncan. Be patient. I think that's the best thing he could have told me because I move too fast all the time. I just want to just do it and get it all over with or just try to beat my defense. But he was like, just be patient because, like, for example, the people don't know what you're going to do. And so they just have to wait. And as long as you wait, they wait. And that's how it goes. Now, Holly, there's a special Virgin Island connection there. That's right. Both Tim Duncan and Aaliyah Boston are from the Virgin Islands. And when I went back there to visit with her and her family this summer, we have a beautiful feature coming out in just about a week about Aaliyah and where she's from. As she's the second most famous person in the Virgin Islands behind Tim Duncan, and it's <laughs> cool that they've made that connection now. Pretty awesome. How was the jet ski, Holly? You look very comfortable on it. That's the first time she's ever been on a jet ski, so I was happy to be the person that got her on it. Wow. How about that? The best part of it was Aaliyah uh, blessing herself before Holly took <laughs> <laughs> That's like us when Holly drives us somewhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Madison Scott can't finish. Rebound taken by Hall for South Carolina. South Carolina finally has a full, healthy complement of players. Different moments. They've had key rotation players out. Not for long stretches, but a game or two here or there. And finally, they got the whole group back together. Reset, couldn't get the roll, rebound secured by Ole Miss. Really nice job by South Carolina taking care of the basketball. Turnovers have been a problem for, their, for them this year. Ole Miss is pressuring them, only one turnover so far in this game. Ole Miss sixth in the nation when it comes to turnover margin. They have won the turnover battle in every game they've played this season. Lob inside to Austin, a little too tall. Hey, there's a stellar lineup on Saturday for the ninth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Oklahoma against number one Auburn. Carolyn will be doing that game. And number four Baylor against Alabama. Kentucky, Kansas, and Tennessee, Texas. College basketball Saturday at 4, 6, and 8 on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. That first game, Oklahoma, Auburn, you got two post players with versatility. You have Tanner Groves that can shoot the three. Walker Kessler for Auburn can shoot the three. So it's going to be an inside out. And then what can all the surrounding cast do to support those two guys? Did you really need to mention anything other than the post players? <laughs> uh, you're right. <laughs> taken B. Point taken. We well, do have to talk about Jabari Smith okay. at Auburn. You know, he's probably going to go first three in the draft. Bodying in. 
Cook couldn't get the finish, did get the whistle. Zaya Cook is going to shoot two. Nice job overloading the left side of the floor so Zaya Cook could go strong right. That's her area of strength, taking it to the basket with her strong hand. Madison Scott will check out. We talked about turnovers. South Carolina's played the majority of this quarter, only one, only one. Against a very tough Ole Miss defense. And Ole Miss relies on those turnovers to generate their offense. Saw them beat Kentucky on SEC Network this past Sunday. It's funny talking to Coach Yo before the game. She said, yeah, I knew we were going to be on TV today against South Carolina. I thought about wearing a suit, but I need to be able to get in the mix. I need these comfy clothes so I can get around. Pull-up jumper won't go. Followed up, Kitchens can't close the door. Kitchens did a nice job, though, getting herself some space to get that shot off. A 16-8 South Carolina lead. South Carolina's only lost this season to unranked Missouri. It came in overtime. You know, part of the reason it was so important for Dawn Staley to play this SEC game, rather than keep the UConn game on the schedule, was because if you want to win a conference championship, you need to accumulate the games, especially when you look up Tennessee has not lost a game in conference yet. So even if you beat Tennessee, if you end up with a lower winning percentage because you've played fewer games, you're not getting a share of that conference title. And this is exactly what Dawn Staley had to say. I know our fans always enjoy the UConn game and our teams enjoy the rivalry, but I've always said that our conference season and especially our goal of another SEC championship is more central to our program. And it wasn't just about taking care of South Carolina. It took care of Ole Miss as well because it's not a guaranteed win with Ole Miss coming in here. And right now, Coach Yo has the Ole Miss Rebels. They're sitting third in the SEC, yeah. so they're still in the hunt as well. How about South Carolina forcing that turnover, picking up in their full court pressure? Shakira Austin had no one to send it to. Boston surrounded, finds Cook. Cook slips. Boston hits on the jumper. Cook back up and running. It's a 10, make it 11 point South Carolina lead. Knocked out of bounds, gonna stay here with Ole Miss, but good pressure from a South Carolina defense that has been just stifling early. Well, Holly talked about the patience, and we heard Aaliyah Boston talking about being very patient. And the thing that Tim Duncan told me that she, he worked with Aaliyah on, not patience, but court awareness. Know where you are when you catch the basketball, because then the defense is at your mercy. Camila Cardoso will check in the transfer from Syracuse, the co-defensive player of the year in the ACC a season ago and the ACC freshman of the year. Dawn Staley still feels like she can get a lot more out of. On the drive, won't go for Madison Scott, but a foul against Cardoso and two free throws here for Scott. But really smart because Madison Scott has the quickness advantage, so you pull her out to the perimeter, pull the six, seven player out on her defensively and then just take it right at her. Very smart decision by Scott. Madison Scott is the first McDonald's All-American in Ole Miss women's basketball history. Coach Yo is talking about it with us before the game said when she committed to us, everybody was thinking, why are you going to Ole Miss? Why are you going to now with the way this program has evolved, there's certainly some validation in that decision for Madison Scott. Misses two free throws here. Pressure applied to me here, trapped in the backcourt. Has to get it across and does to Cardoso. Another trap, Zaya Cook is gonna get fouled after Austin and Reed had her pinned and that's going to mean free throws here for South Carolina. That was a great trap. That was a great trap by Ole Miss because you get into the corner right once they get over the half court line. And that was right in front of us, Carolyn. Did you see a foul? I didn't see a foul either, Ooh. B. I'm right there with you. It was quick, active hands. Great they trap. They great called trap. Shakira Austin for that foul. I didn't see it. That's two on Mimi Reed. That was on Mimi. Could have been Ron Reed or Austin, but called on Reed. 
Austin without a foul thus far. That was a concern for Coach Yo going up against the interior of South Carolina. Here's Austin breaking the timeline. Find Scott in the corner. Baker. And Ole Miss will reset. Trailing 21 to 8. About a minute to go in this first quarter. Collins coming off a big game against Kentucky. Collins flips it up and off. Trying to follow it up, and Ami here secures it. Ole Miss has missed its last five shots. Two for one opportunity if South Carolina wanted it. They had it because Camilla Cardoso run, <laughs> ran the floor and Zion Cook's like, my bad, I missed you. You got to reward the big girl when she runs the floor. This time tries to squeeze it to her and Cardoso throws it away. And now Ole Miss can essentially hold for a final shot here. You got to look for a two-man game with Monk and Austin. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Monk, here comes the screen from Austin, coming to grab it. Three to shoot, Austin on the move, finger rolls it in. That is a gorgeous finish from Shakira Austin to end the first quarter. Coach Yo trying to fire up her team. One of the outstanding characters in college basketball. You'll learn more about her next. Well, I got to know Yolette McPhee, McEwen during football season. We met down at Ole Miss, but I started following on TikTok, and I'm just obsessed. She is so fun. <laughs> she uses that as a great recruiting tool. She has a lot of fun with her staff and her players. So if you want to smile every single day, you follow Yo. Some sweet moves that Coach Yo has. Some sweet progress that she's orchestrated as well. First year at Ole Miss, 9-22 record. Next year, 0-16 in the SEC, but then the runner-up in the NIT a season ago, and this season ranked for the first time since 2007, and she's got plenty of emotion in that huddle. Well, she's got a lot of fire about her, and she's, she's competitive. I talked to Mimi Reed at Shoot Around, and she said, I'm kind of like Coach. The coach is the pit bull, and I'm the German Shepherd. I asked Coach Joe about that, and she said, I've got a picture of these pit bulls on my desk, and there's one German Shepherd. And the point was that you, the German Shepherd doesn't realize it's a German Shepherd. It thinks it's a pit bull because it's in with the group. Mm. Ryan and Holly think they're post players. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's it. Well, Coach Joe's going to like this start to the quarter as Monk came up with a steal, but then couldn't finish in transition. Down the other way, three on two. Rivers unable to put it down. Coming back for the rejection was Madison Scott. Rivers comes up with the deflection and gets fouled. Sanaya Rivers, who Dawn Staley was very excited to see against the pressure of Ole Miss, the freshman coming through. Yeah, she's been really impressive just with her energy. She's a terrific athlete. You see her come in, gets blocked, doesn't give up on the play. Doesn't give up on the play. And Kept going, got the steal the other way, and then able to come in and, and get the opportunity at the free throw line. But this young woman is talented. Hey, that's not the first time she's gotten a shot blocked. Because you know she goes against every day in practice. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps prepare you for this situation. Sadia Rivers, the number three recruit. That's the young woman who's blocking her shot in practice, Aaliyah Boston. South Carolina, the number one recruiting class in the nation while bringing back all of their players from a season ago. Dawn Staley watched the number two overall recruit, Raven Johnson, get hurt earlier this year out for the season. But Sanai Rivers is a part of this rotation and a real contributor for the Gamecocks. You mentioned Raven Johnson. That was going to be the backup point guard for Destiny Henderson. So, Saniah Rivers has had to be moved to that point guard spot. On the follow, nice work from Donetta Johnson, who has probably been the second brightest spot in the early parts of this game after Shakira Austin. Yeah, really nice bounce and attack to get to the offensive glass there. Here is Boston, guarded by Austin. Boston looked like she shuffled the feet. Did not get the travel call, did get a late whistle, and Aaliyah Boston is going to shoot two. 
Aaliyah Boston attacking in. I thought Shakira Austin may have should have gotten called for the reach in, but eventually the foul was called. Did she not change her pivot foot at some point at the end of that move? You get distracted by the upper part. Yeah. I <laughs> Does he? Yeah. <laughs> I think there was some jet ski-like movement at one point from the foul line to the block that was not called. But Boston cashes in at the free throw line. 76% from the line this season. And coming up at the half, we'll have the NCAA tournament top 16 reveal. You don't want to miss that. As Austin misfires on the jumper. A 24-12 South Carolina lead. Here's Boston. This time guarded by Scott. Rivers takes the handoff, the pull up, banks off, rebound secured by Ole Miss. Not easy to do against South Carolina. Best offensive rebounding team in the nation. See now, Austin has Bree Bill on her. Now she should go inside, take advantage of the mismatch. Monk gets it over to Collins. Three to shoot, Monk has to create, does miss the floater. Monk's had a few decent looks in the paint that just have not gone down. Rivers finds the cutter in Beal. Beal can't finish. Great pass by Rivers though. Great vision to see that Beal was cutting in. Monk gonna slow things down. Coach Yo said one of the main reasons why she feels like this team has finally taken on her personality is because of the toughness of LaShonda Monk. Austin gets fouled by Boston. And two free throws for Austin. Hey, catch an NBA Friday doubleheader on ESPN. NBA Countdown kicks off coverage at 7 Eastern and then at 7.30 Eastern. It's Lakers Hornets, followed by Knicks Bucks. NBA Friday on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tell me who's calling that Lakers game, Ryan. Well, Hubie Brown. And? Israel Gutierrez. And? Me. <laughs> it's an easy trip from Columbia to Charlotte, too. It sure is. That's the first free throw make of the game for Austin. By the way, you know, Austin and Boston, we know they rhyme. But did you feel embarrassed at all, Rebecca, that earlier today it took Carolyn pointing out to us after our conversation for about five minutes that they're also cities? Like, how did we not get that right like away? Like, right away. Yeah. Um, I went to Vanderbilt University. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Someone <laughs> needed to save UConn and Fordham over here. <laughs> Boston in the paint. Flips it in. Aaliyah Boston. Ten points. Four rebounds already for the double-double machine. Handling that trap really well. South Carolina. Here's Austin stopping on the block, turning, using the window, couldn't finish it. Henderson off the carom. Around the Saxton screen. Rivers curls and finishes. Sanaya Rivers, very impressive. She gives them something different. She gives them something different off the bounce. She's a great passer, can finish. Timeout, Ole Miss. You watch Aaliyah, pa Aaliyah Boston. That's not patience, but composure, recognizing, gathering yourself. And then Sanaya Rivers, look, I think she changes it, she juggles it, she still keeps control and gets the finish for the Gamecock. All right, Elle, we're looking forward to that at the half. Heard Charlie talking about the resume for South Carolina. It's an impressive one. Their only loss at unranked Missouri in overtime. They've been ranked number one in the AP poll for all 12 weeks of the season. They have eight wins against top 25 opponents, most in Division I basketball. Been a lot to cheer about here in Columbia. I, I want to put you two on the spot a little bit before our, our big reveal at the half. Is there an obvious second best team in the nation to you? Biggest challenger to South Carolina right now. Here's the anomaly that I look at. Teams that are unpredictable, like a Louisville. Mm. Defensively, they could, you only have to be better one night. Yeah. And defensively, 
Could they challenge South Carolina? I think so. I think Stanford, because of the way they were able to play them earlier this season. That game was theirs for the taking at the half, and they just turned the ball over too much in the second half. The ability to hit threes, I think, is an advantage. But you got to have a number of bigs that you can throw in against South Carolina size. There are two teams in the SEC that are biting at the bit. LSU wants another shot at South Carolina, and South Carolina is still yet to play Tennessee. Yeah. We will have that matchup between South Carolina and Tennessee on ESPN on February 20th. Rebound, Austin zings it up the floor. Miss going to calm things out. Ole Miss does not have an assist yet in this first half. Austin using the jab step, spinning, dishing. Well, now they have one. Beautiful feed from Austin to Scott on the finish. Ole Miss down 12. I don't see a panic. The biggest deficit they've come back from is eight points against Texas Tech. But they don't look panicked right now being down 12 to the number one team in the country. What was one of the things Coach Joe talked to us about before the game? He said when you play a team like South Carolina, there's a mental game as well. As Boston misses the three, said where you can start the game like you're down 10 nothing because there's a hurdle you still have to get over to feel like you belong. She said, I don't think we're going to have that mental hurdle. I think that part we've taken care of. Yeah, they've been competitive. They haven't been afraid. They just have had opportunities where they've missed shots and put South Carolina at the free throw line. Shot clock down to seven. Reed into the paint, bounces. Scott got blocked from behind by Bree Beal. Here's Beal peeling back out with Henderson. Beal thought about taking it, realized plenty of time, no need to yet. Boston gets denied by Austin. Madison Scott double dribble. She knew it. Shakira Austin, we've seen her score when she's caught it at the free throw line area. This is where she's so dangerous because she can drive on you. Well, she's shown she can also make the right decision. What a beautiful assist when the double team came over. This is her best spot. Get her the ball at the free throw line, let her do her thing. It's a big time pro move. That is. Well, her coach says that she has the best footwork in America, and you could see it on that last play. She's a big time dancer. She loves to get her feet moving, dancing anytime she gets, and it just comes naturally to on the court to move her feet like that. That'll help. Coach Joe also said her dad really had her honing in on her footwork since she was 10 years old. Yeah, she showed me some of the breakdown highlights. Coach Joe has them on her cell phone. And that was when before she even went to high school. Boston, and that time it's going to be a foul called against Austin. That was a beautiful pass by Destiny Henderson with the right hand. It was just beautifully wrapped into uh, Aaliyah Boston. I mean, you, as a big, you rely on your guards to be able to get you the ball. See, look at that. Just a wraparound, simple thing. And she's not going to get an assist for it because Boston's fouled and goes to the free throw line, but a beautiful pass. Aaliyah Boston, going to shoot two. She's three of three from the line now thus far tonight. South Carolina is 10 of 12 as a team. Ole Miss just two for four. You know, here's the difference that I have seen in South Carolina this year from last year. Remember when Asia Wilson played? She brought the dog to South Carolina. Then you had Kiki Harrington. She brought the dog. Then after Kiki and Tanisha, they, they left. It was like, who is it going to be now? It is Aaliyah Boston. She brings that dog for the Gamecocks. Asia Wilson in attendance, catching the action with her statue right outside. A jumper won't go for Johnson. Here comes Rivers bursting up the floor. The freshman, Sanaya Rivers, been impressive in her limited minutes in this first half. A 30 to 16 South Carolina lead. Saxton dumps it down and the finish from Boston. Plus the foul. 
That's some beautiful big-to-big -big passing that you know Asia Wilson can appreciate. The work that Aaliyah Boston did on that possession because she was posting up strong and kept posting up. And look at that, reverses the seal. How she catches that ball between two defenders, gets hit and finishes. That's why she's special. Already 14 points for Aaliyah Boston. She has been a, a dominant player through her first two collegiate seasons. But you can just see the refining of her game. And, and it, it's unbelievable how much she's grown when she was already excellent. When she came in as a freshman, she already had a tremendous basketball IQ. And she played with composure. She's always been a student of the game. And when you have a player with that talent and thinks the game, it makes her extremely, extremely dangerous. Austin spinning, bodying, gets the foul called against Boston. That'll be her second. So two for Boston, two for Austin. Okay, keep an eye here on Aaliyah Boston and how she's going to position the defense on the high side so that when Destiny Henderson makes the pass up top, she's already sealed. She rode the defense up so that it could be an over-the-top pass. Patience in the post. If you don't get it the first time, recognize where the defense is. Sometimes you got to direct traffic, tell your guards where to pass the ball so they can get it into you. That's why we have to tell people what to do, <laughs> B. We're used to directing traffic. Austin hits the first free throw. Austin 69% from the line this season. Three of three so far tonight. This is the second. Nice battle there by Monk and an offensive rebound for Ole Miss. Dump down and good battle by Rivers. Austin had the size on her. Rivers fought hard, came up with the rejection. Then it's off of Donetta Johnson. What an exemplary defensive possession from the freshman, Sanaya Rivers. Sanaya Rivers just brings something different. This South Carolina team is improving because of what this young woman is bringing them on both ends of the floor. Well, it's been a struggle in this first half for Coach O's Ole Miss team against the number one team in the nation, the South Carolina Gamecocks, a 33-17 lead with just over two minutes to go in the second quarter. Ole Miss averages 17 points a game off of their opponent's turnovers. And South Carolina, again, a team that has been turnover prone this season has been outstanding today. Only three turnovers so far in this half. Nearly at another there as Monk went for the steal. Here's Cook. But Austin switched on her. Austin trying to stay with Cook. Did so beautifully and then able to collect the rebound. Not a lot of bigs can do that. Switch out on a guard and keep them in front of them. And then go chase down the rebound afterwards. Monk in traffic. He's going to settle things down. Just waiting for Monk to get settled in. She is the most competitive Ole Miss player on this Ole Miss team. She's a little shook right now. Oh, nice footwork and so nice that it was a travel. Shakira Austin, a big who can switch out on the perimeter. Most bigs aren't comfortable there. Look at her, step out. Stop the baseline, cut off the other way, stays with her, then contests. That is hard to do when you're 6'5". That's something that's exciting WNBA GM. Yes, at least it was hard for me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even try. <laughs> Well, guys, there were two WNBA coaches that practiced today to watch Shakira Austin. I saw Tanisha Wright of the Atlanta Dream and Marianne Stanley of the Indiana Fever. She is really rising on the WNBA draft boards and garnering a lot of interest. Those coaches here to watch her today. Yeah, on our mock draft right now for ESPN, she's up to third. I, I think she could go as high as number one. You got to understand that this is this young woman fits a style for Mike Tebow, and to go along with that, she's from the Maryland area. Talk about sell some tickets to watch that. I'd buy a ticket if I lived anywhere close to Washington, D.C. Austin 
Unable to get the finish there. Want to remind you, the top 16 reveal to the NCAA tournament is coming up at the half. Less than a minute away. That's right. So you're going to stay in your seat. I right? am. Okay, all right. I am. Well, make sure you have mixed minus in your ears so you know what's going on. <laughs> you know I love my mixed minus. A little bit of zone here for Ole Miss. They haven't shown much of that here today. Henderson, too strong. Rebound, Austin. 17 seconds left in this first half. Reed is going to peel back, let the clock wind. Rebels will hold for a final shot here. Sonetta Collins, three-point shooter on the baseline. She has not even gotten an attempt from three yet in this half. Wow! How about that three from Austin? Fading away across her body to bury the triple, just her third three of the season. Shakira Austin and Aaliyah Boston both performing like future lottery picks in the WNBA in this first half. Dawn Staley's team up 13. Dawn is with Holly. Well, this is such a fun watch of the post players right now. Aaliyah Boston, how has she really established herself a bit, Dawn? A minute. She's, she's making quick decisions. She's either going to go to score quickly or she's getting it out of there quickly because she's drawing the double team. Shakira Austin doing a lot for them. How do you defend her well? I mean, you can't defend her any better than what we did. She's making tough shots, great footwork. Stretching the floor. We're just trying to make it tough for her to, to, to not get clean looks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. All right, Coach Holly, time to go to L. Duncan, Nikki Fargus, Charlie Cream in the studio. As promised, we've got the exclusive reveal of the NCAA's committee's first top 16 seating. So let's take a look right now. We're going to do a countdown. We'll start there at the bottom. At number 16, Kansas State. Number 15, Georgia. Number 14, Oregon. And number 13, Baylor. What stands out to you here, Charlie? Well, the, the elevation of Oregon, the injuries early in the season cost them a bunch of wins, but they're healthy now, they're playing well, and they've elevated to 14. Well, Coach Taylor with the Georgia Bulldogs, they have done an amazing job with bringing that nucleus back. So they've got seniors, they've got experience, they've got Q Morrison, who is one of the best guards in the country. All right, let's get to the next four. We start at number 12, it's LSU. Number 11, UConn. Number 10, Iowa State. Number nine, Michigan. What's your biggest takeaway from this, Charlie? We're just not used to seeing UConn with a sure. double digit number next to its name. A three seed for UConn right now. Obviously injuries, COVID have played a role in their season, but they haven't been the team we thought they were. And this is pretty reflective of that. You think that LSU is, is ranked appropriately? I do, and, and you could make an argument to move them up the line a little bit because of the experience that they have. And, and Kim Mulkey has done a phenomenal job of taking these seniors and really having them play at that very high level. All right, let's get you five through eight now. Arizona coming in at eight, Texas at number seven, Indiana at number six, and Louisville at number five. Your thoughts here? Texas, a, a team that I didn't have quite this high, but if you look at their net ranking, you look at the, their big win over Stanford, uh, the committee's obviously placing a lot of importance on strength of schedule, on that net rating, and your best wins, and Texas is the perfect example of that. I like Arizona. Arizona, the energy that they play with, how hard they play, but also they had a taste of this from last season. And so they're, they've got, they're probably playing like right now with a little chip on their shoulder. Not playing with a chip on their shoulder, the number one seeds, right? And deservedly so. There it is, four Tennessee, three NC State, two Stanford, and one South Carolina. Charlie, you said that they should be, that the committee should have them in this exact order, and they do. Anything stand out to you here? The fact that there is some separation between South Carolina, I think, and the, and the rest of the country, or the rest of these three teams, but I think Tennessee being on the one line, I haven't seen them there in a long time. So the season that they're having, what Kelly Harper's done, coordinating around some injuries and some time off, has been quite amazing, and the number one line reflects that. Your thoughts on seeing the top seeds overall? Well, when you look at the number one overall, you got to play at a level consistently night in and night out. You know that everybody's going to come and bring your best game. So you have NC State circled, and I like what NC State is doing. Wes has his team always ready to play, and you can see that in how they're playing now. They're playing like they're ready for March Madness. Here's how the regions break down, and let me just say right away, Charlie, when we were having the conversation with the committee, the first thing you asked was, wow. Look at that. That is UConn, not in Bridgeport, but in Spokane. 
What do you make of right now them being in that bracket? Well, it's, it's really interesting because <laughs> based on the S-curve, it's something we talk about here in Bracketology World, sure. UConn would have been placed in Bridgeport. However, because there's four SEC teams here in this top 16 and there's four Big 12 teams in this top 16, the Huskies had to get moved in order to avoid conflict because the rule is that among the top four seeds, as long as there's not more than four of those teams from the same conference, then they have to be separate in the regions. UConn was actually the team that got bumped because of that rule. Well, and that rule needs to stay in place because you want to keep the integrity of the bracket. Mm -hmm. And when you have a team, a, a, a conference that has teams that are playing at a high level like the SEC right now, as you mentioned, having four teams uh, in the top 16, then you're going to have to shift. But UConn, again, you never know. Once they get healthy, you never know what they're going to do as far as shifting up the line. If you're wondering how good a prognosticator this is, since they started doing this top 16 reveal four tournaments ago, 58 of the 64 teams on the initial reveal have actually held on to their top four seeding at come tournament time. So this is as good an indicator as any what we're going to see in March. We welcome you back to our Thursday showcase. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Getting ready to start the second half in Columbia, South Carolina, and Adrian Wilson, she's gonna like the score. Her Gamecocks, a 33 to 20 lead on Ole Miss. We get ready to begin the third quarter. We welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, and NCAA champion winning coach, Carolyn Peck. The bigs, you talked about them off the start of the broadcast, ladies, and they were terrific in that first half. Shakira Austin, Aaliyah Boston, both doing their thing. Yeah, they certainly didn't disappoint. And Shakira Austin showed some of her versatility. She is outstanding when she catches the ball at the free throw line area and can take it at you. She did a great job of scoring sorry, at the three at the end of the half as well. Versatility. She saw that eight minus. She said, check this out, B. I got the three. <laughs> But Aaliyah Boston also came in and went to work as well. She had 15 points. She got it done down low and in the paint. I'm going to tell you, we're in for a good second half with the battle between these two. But look at how Don Staley can move around Aaliyah Boston inside, in the restricted area, and out to the short corner. It's a beautiful visual shot chart, too, isn't it? I mean, it just looks gorgeous. Take a look at the leading scorers tonight. Austin with 12 points. Boston with 15. Holly Rowe had a chance to catch up with Coach Young. Well, you know, she said there were some positives. She thought the zone that they threw out there for moments really started to work. She said they might see more of that here in the second half. But she said our shooters have caught good. Our shooters have to be more aggressive. She said Shakira's doing a great job, but she needs help. I'm a little disappointed with our shooters not making their shots and not being aggressive enough. Yeah, that three that Austin hit at the end of the half was the first three on this hit in the half. Cook, that's going to be a jump ball. South Carolina has the possession error. And Monk starts the second half on the bench for Ole Miss. Well, Ole Miss has started with a different lineup than they started the game with. Ianla Kitchens is not in the starting lineup as well. Much smaller lineup here. You have Johnson, Reed, as well as Madison Scott joining Collins and Austin. Here is Johnson. Johnson. Into the paint, flips it up and off with the left hand. Nice box out from Aaliyah Boston. That's a good take by Donetta Johnson. The thing that Ole Miss does not need to do is try to get it all back at once. One possession at a time. Down 13. Riding a 13-game winning streak. Ole Miss was longest since 1991. Boston traveled, and South Carolina turns it over. I mean, if we were perusing the stat sheet at the half and going to say, well, what's the key number that stood out? 
And we say it just like that, Rebecca, of course. <laughs> As I, we're perusing. I, 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 I think we'd say just three turnovers for South Carolina. Yeah, without question. And, and, and that's been their issue this year, averaging 15 per game. And against the pressure that Ole Miss has put on them, they really took care of the basketball. Ole Miss number one in the SEC. They force over 20 turnovers per game. South Carolina also, they shot the ball well. They shot 53.8% in that first quarter. The second quarter wasn't so good. That was only 20%. But overall, they held Ole Miss to 30%. Their defense was stellar in the first half. And just to clean up what I said before, Ole Miss is not currently on a 13-game winning streak, but earlier this season had a 13-game winning streak, which was their longest since 1991. As Coach Yo watches another turnover, and now LaShonda Monk is going to come into the game for Madison Scott. Nine turnovers for the Rebels. Now, with this lineup, Donetta Johnson is the four for Ole Miss. So they're going to look to open up the floor offensively with the guards. Yeah, this is a very small Ole Miss lineup now. When you play this small in Ole Miss, you got to make sure when South Carolina shoots the basketball, they don't get offensive rebounds. You heard Holly talk about her conversation with Coach Yo going to the zone. <laughs> Aaliyah Boston surrounded and fouled just out of position she got deep. And a big smile from Coach Yo. Free throws coming for Aaliyah Boston. You know, we were talking with Dawn Staley about Aaliyah Boston, her game, and where else can it go from here? And she said, the next thing I'm talking to her about is improving her passing. That's what I want. But she said she is just such a worker, and she wants it so bad, and she's so determined. Dawn Staley just so complimentary of the time that Aaliyah Boston puts into her game and the insistence on always improving. What I liked about that is there are two players in the South Carolina starting lineup that have a positive assist to turnover ratio. Destiny Henderson, the point guard, and Aaliyah Boston. Tell them, <laughs> B, tell them. But she still wants her to be a better passer. But the thing about it is you have to be careful with making your post player a better passer because when she gets the ball in the paint, you want that to be a no pass zone. <laughs> Monk, five to shoot, step back jumper, won't go. Rebound Beal, South Carolina, a 17 point lead. Monk now one of five, Beal all the way in, puts it home, off the window. Bree Beal been aggressive on her takes multiple times tonight. And a timeout taken by Ole Miss. Bria Beal, what did I say about her? Bully ball. You watch this. She going to snatch the board. Then, hey, move. Get out of my way. I'm going to pay this off. Cha-ching. <laughs> well, pretty cool. Our colleague, Carolyn Peck, gave Dawn Staley a piece of her championship net back in 2015 that Dawn then returned to Carolyn in 2017 after winning and Dawn Staley then sent around pieces of her championship net to all the black women who are head coaches across Division I basketball to continue the legacy. Carolyn, it's such a beautiful connection and now tradition that you started with Dawn back in 2015. Well, it started with Passion Thompson when Tennessee won the national championship. I had moved on to Kentucky. And Passion Thompson called me down on the court when Tennessee was cutting down nets. I saw her cut down two. And she's a post player, right? And I had worked with the post. She comes over to me and she gives me a piece of the net. And she says, I want you to keep this until you win one of your own. I kept it on my shoe from my time at Kentucky as an assistant at Purdue through the Elite Eight till we won the championship. And I was at, then started commentating and I recognized Dawn, I felt like she was moving this team in the right direction to win in a national championship. I knew what that motivation did for me, and I just wanted to share that with her. I thought it was a secret until after South Carolina won the national championship. And, I, you know, you watch it on TV, you don't see the press conference. My phone starts blowing up while other people started getting word that Dawn had pulled 
the piece of the net at out at the, at the press conference and talked about that exchange. I mean, it, it, it's such a cool story, and what a moment to then have Coach Staley pull out the piece after South Carolina wins its championship in 2017. And I asked Coach Yo about when she received her piece of the net, and she said it meant so much to her. She shared the story with her team. And I'm going to tell you, Coach Yo is big on history. She also had her team watch the documentary of Lucy Harris that just passed away, a tremendous player from Delta State. She wants to educate her team about the history of this game. Monk, wow. There are blocks, and then there's that. Aaliyah Boston swallowed it up, and then Madison Scott able to turn it into two. Seventeen-point deficit. The largest deficit that Ole Miss has faced at any time this season was 20 in their loss to Tennessee. Aaliyah Boston patrols the paint, and she's long and has great footwork in there, just gobbles it. Gobbles it up and throws it back down. <laughs> but you know what I like about this being? She hasn't blocked the shot out of bounds, but she keeps it in play. So her team has the opportunity. If you keep it in play, they can be running the other, other direction on offense. They leave reset into the game for South Carolina. Out there with Saxton, as well as Beal and Destiny Henderson. Seven to shoot, Saxton flashes, and hits. And Victoria Saxton did not score in double figures in any of her first 13 games, but has done so three times in her last six. As Austin can't finish, Scott, the offensive rebound. Good D, Beal disruptive, out of bounds, off of Ole Miss. Bree Beal is at a banner game on the defensive end. If I got to go to battle, you know who I'm taking with me? Who are you taking? Bree Beal. <laughs> All day long. She will fight you till the end. Especially when she's left off the finalist for Naismith Defensive Player of the Year, right? You said it. Well, guys, you know who you don't want to take into a fight is Aaliyah Boston. She actually told us today that she and Tim Duncan actually did some boxing exercises and work. And she said, I'm terrible. If you get in a fight, just don't take me because you will lose. We will both lose. <laughs> We'll take Aaliyah for rebounding, for finesse around the bucket. The blocks. Yeah. I'm going to take her in just for intimidation. She looks the part anyway. I think so. When we come back, Holly Rowe going to chat with Asia Wilson, the former South Carolina star, now WNBA MVP in the building. South Carolina 41-22 lead on number 24 Ole Miss. The Gamecocks the number one team in the nation as they have been all season long. Aisha Wilson enjoying the DJ booth with her brother on the ones and twos here in Columbia. Holly is going to get with Asia in a moment. <laughs> in Boston and Destiny Anderson enjoying the dancing as well. Everybody having a good time inside Colonial Life, and Holly is with Asia. Okay, is your brother the DJ right now? That's too much. Yes, that's my brother. He is the DJ. So, yeah, we've got a little family thing going. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to talk about that later. I think there's a dance party about to happen. Okay, you're here. The, the love is always so real for you. It was the one-year anniversary of your statue being placed outside. What is it like every time you come back here? It's still surreal, honestly. It really is. Uh, I love the energy. I love coming back home and just the, all the support that's still going on. I love it. Um, we're watching Aaliyah Boston, and every time she does something in a game, I see social media try to compare the two of you. What do you think? about what she's doing out here. I mean, I just remember people, I used to hate when people compared me to other players. Uh, I think she is her own. I think she is a pro. She's developed so much and she's grown so much uh, just watching her here. So she's so skillful uh, and it's just great to watch. Yeah, it is beautiful. You have been so great in the WNBA again into the semifinals in the playoffs this year, but you've got a new head coach in Becky Hammond. What are you? First of all, I guess you're a free agent. Are you coming back? And are you excited about your new head coach? See what I did there? Hey, I was trying to get the team. <laughs> Oh, but no, I'm a restricted free agent, so we're still just doing some talking, but I'm just excited to have Becky along in our franchise. Uh, she's 
just to pick her brain. I'm, I'm excited about that. All right, we have a big free agent show coming up in the WNBA, so <laughs> just trying to get that scoop for you. <laughs> Nicely done, Holly. Very much looking forward to our free agency show coming up. As Henderson hooks it in off the window. Last couple of times, Ole Miss has come out of timeouts. They've been trying to get Shakira Austin the ball on the block. And two possessions ago, we saw why. Beautiful move across the paint, finishing with the right hand. Reed can't hit the three. Scott left alone for the rebound. Free agency show, Feb 1st, 5 Eastern. 5 Eastern, February 1. All right. ESPN 2. There you go. We will all be there. Rebecca, Carolyn. Holly, the China will get you ready for WNBA free agency. Anderson in the corner, no. Rebound, fought for, won by Reed. 19 points, South Carolina cushion. Austin has three fouls now as Scott bullies into a bucket plus the foul. And a chance for three for Madison Scott. Hey, NBA Saturday primetime as two of the top teams in the league this weekend. The star-studded Nets are in the Bay Area to take on Steph Curry and the Warriors. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 o'clock. Then it's the Nets and the Warriors at 8.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Madison Scott, who's at the free throw line, her game isn't the same, but her body and the way she moves so reminds me of Simone Augustus. I think the same thing. So reminds me. Yeah. She's a little more excitable. If your team, if Ole Miss were to make a run, you're going to see some emotion from Madison Scott. Simone Augustus was a smooth customer. Scott misses the free throw and a foul called against Baker. Well, Leah Boston is closing in on her 13th straight double-double. Eight rebounds and 17 points thus far for the no doubt about it favorite to be the National Player of the Year. Also, I mean, that just wasn't a smart foul on uh, the part of Ole Miss. You're in the bonus and you're putting Aaliyah Boston at the line now. And Boston, a good free throw shooter. Family in the building, rocking that Virgin Island flag. Alan Cleon, the parents of Aaliyah Boston. You know, it's amazing. They are able to come to many of her games. They've been doing that since she was in high school in Massachusetts. And mom says, you know, we work all year, save extra money so that we can travel and follow her around the world. She said, we've been to eight different countries, traveled all across the world because of our daughter's basketball. And these parents are absolutely dedicated to being there every step of the way. Pretty awesome. In a couple of years, I can think of some other cities they're going to have to go to see her play. Brissette gets the whistle against Madison Scott, who does not agree. And more free throws for South Carolina. There's 16 of 19 from the line thus far tonight. Make it 16 of 18, and that's going to be the third on Madison Scott. Lily Brissette coming off a terrific performance against Vanderbilt in their last game where she had 14 points. She's another player, whether she starts or comes in off the bench, who can really make a difference for South Carolina. Back now, healthy, can play the guard spot again. If there's anything positive that came after the, came out of the COVID extra year, because Lily Grissett got hurt at the end of her senior year at the SEC tournament, and giving her the ability to rehab, to come back and use this year to prepare herself for the next level, that's where COVID was a blessing. Yeah. Made her season debut on uh, December 12th against Maryland after the leg injury in March. Austin, smooth, a little too strong. Rivers the rebound. Pushing, Sanaya Rivers. Oh, nice cross-court feed. Henderson can't hit the three. Boston the rebound. Another chance for Henderson. And she'll throw it away to Scott. 
Just the fifth turnover from South Carolina in this game. That was the number one key for Dawn Staley against this Ole Miss team, protecting the basketball. And the Gamecocks have done a wonderful job of that. Austin couldn't squeeze it in, but got the whistle against Cardoso. And free throws here for Shakir Austin. There's a loose shoe. How did she lose her shoe? I didn't even recognize that she, it doesn't affect her play. <laughs> Aaliyah Boston left her shoe somewhere on the floor. <laughs> she blocked her way out of the shoe. <laughs> Boston just one rebound away from her 13th straight double-double. The 12 straight are already a school record. And Shakira Austin just to get some help. She's got 15 points. She's the only player for Ole Miss in double figures. <laughs> Austin misses the second. A 19 point South Carolina lead. Cardoso, Grissett, Henderson, Rivers, and Boston the five on the floor for South Carolina. Shot clock down to six. Rivers slinking baseline. And a foul called against Shakira Austin, and that is going to be her fourth foul with 55.4 seconds to go here in this third quarter. And Ole Miss is waiting for an explanation. But obviously a critical fourth foul against Ole Miss's star and a player projected to go in the top three in the WNBA draft. By the way, in case you're wondering, no rebound was credited to Aaliyah Boston there. Okay, but here's my question. How did she get the basketball in order to be fouled to go to the free throw line if she didn't get the rebound? Well, we're going to find out, Carolyn. Feel like it should still be a rebound off the deflection? Well, Shakira Austin wasn't anywhere near Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, you're right. She wasn't, any, she wasn't in the play. Now, one of two things are happening there. Either if Austin is called for a foul, then it was on the pass, pass not the rebound. Boston should not be at the line then. Collins collects it. Collins hit four threes against Kentucky on Sunday. Nutta has taken just one shot here tonight. Austin out of the game now with her fourth foul. A dubious call at best. Scott can't finish. And a whistle going to go against Ole Miss. Let's take another look, Rebecca. So Austin cleanly blocks the shot on Saniya Rivers, but she's nowhere near Leah Boston. So like here, it, that's clean as can be. Yeah. But then you put Saniya Rivers at the free throw line if the foul's on Austin. Well, that is a ghastly miss. And it's critical for Ole Miss because that is her fourth foul. That's a miss. That's a clear miss. Clear miss. First of all, I don't think there was any foul on Austin to begin with. Looks like she just hit ball. One. Secondly, if it was a foul on her, clearly it should not have been Aaliyah Boston who is shooting the free throw. Right, it should have been Sanaya. So you need your NBA challenge there, right? Yeah. Boston, meanwhile, is 10 of 11 from the line herself. As Donetta Johnson gets free to lay it in. Johnson, the transfer from Georgia. Childhood teammate of Mimi Reed. Reed was disappointed initially when Johnson chose Georgia over Ole Miss, but got her here eventually. Good pressure there from the Rebels, and that's how the third quarter will end. Well, is Aaliyah Boston going to get her 13th straight double-double? We're going to find out in the fourth quarter from Columbia. Well, guys, I actually spent 
today doing interviews with Kentucky's Oscar Shibwe. He just came off a historic 20-point, 20 20-rebound 20 night. He will go into Allen Fieldhouse to play against Kansas. We also have a feature coming up on game day about Ochai Agbaji, National Player of the Year candidate for the Jayhawks. How do you have more hours in the day? You know, like, <laughs> do you think she took that little time piece from Hermione Granger that allows her to go back and do you know, more thing than anyone else? You know Holly flew in on a red eye yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, on her, her broom <laughs> after she played I some quit. Never. Hey, Holly, <laughs> no, never I, would I ever <laughs> say that you were on a broom. No, no, no. You know, it's sticking with the Harry Potter thing. Yeah. Oh, Harry Potter. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I'm just glad when I dropped the Hermione Granger, I was wondering if someone was going to pick it up. So I gotcha. You. I gotcha. <laughs> uh, the whistle will go against Ole Miss. Aaliyah Boston is one rebound away from her 13th straight double double, which would extend a school record. In their last game against Vanderbilt, Dawn Staley did put her in midway through the fourth quarter to get that rebound. We'll see if she does that again here today. You know, it's always risky of uh, putting a player back in. You're up 20 just to get a record. Fourth foul against Madison Scott. Austin is still on the bench with four for Ole Miss. After... That controversial fourth foul call. Cardoso can't finish. Look out. A knee here hits the hardwood with velocity. The foul called against Ole Miss. Collins just trying to box out, but a knee here left her feet and kind of got undercut a bit. So you're just trying to box out, but yeah, you can't do that when a player's left her feet. You got to protect her. Collins, though, not looking. She doesn't know that the player has left her right, feet. She's just trying to box out. Rivers can't motor it in. Here comes Lashana Monk. Monk gets it out to Johnson. Her runner won't go. Followed up by Monk and trying to flag it down. She takes it away. LaShonda Monk has a motor that does not stop. In the month of January, Monk has had six double doubles. So January has been good to her. And I know Coach Yo wants to see Monk get going if Ole Miss has a shot in this full quarter. Yeah, just six points. Thus far tonight for Johnson after, as Carolyn said, she entered this game with six straight games scoring in double figures. A 20-point South Carolina lead. Here's Monk. Pull-up is good. And Coach Yo giving LaShonda Monk a little something extra afterwards. Well, that was because she missed a box out the, before at the offensive put back yeah. on the other end. Aaliyah Boston is at the scorer's table, ready to check in as South Carolina turns it over for just the sixth time tonight. So Boston back in. One rebound shy of her 13th straight double-double. I like the lineup with Aaliyah Boston and Camilla Cardoso in because both are willing passers. They can make space for each other in the high-low offensively, and then you've got two tremendous shot blockers. Netta Johnson pulls up from the elbow, left it short. There's Cardoso using the size. Ami here lost it. Scott retrieves it. Here comes Ole Miss. Monk wants to set up the offense for the Rebels, trailing by 18. Monk wheeling and can't finish. There it is. 13 straight double-doubles for Aaliyah Boston. Extending a school record. Now I get her out. I would take Aaliyah Boston out. Defense! 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 
Cook, Henderson, Beal all on the bench for South Carolina. How about the South Carolina fans, though, being that, completely aware of it? As soon as, she yeah. got, as soon as she got the rebound, they all started to cheer. And a foul called against Ole Miss. Aaliyah Boston is going to go back to the line to shoot her 12th and 13th free throws of the game. Right here. That's it. 13 straight. Wave that flag. The Virgin Islands. Very proud. The SEC single season record over the last 20 seasons belongs to Sylvia Fowles, 19. It's in reach. Hey, I just like that we're replaying a rebound, a defensive board in a 20 point game. <laughs> and the crowd's cheering for it. Making history. That's right. The only thing concerning about the atmosphere here at Colonial Life Arena is the hockey-like frigidity that we're feeling right now. It has all of a sudden, I, I noticed you went to the north face in this fourth quarter as Boston gets the ovation. Nice hand for Aaliyah Boston. As the crowd celebrates her 13th straight double-double. Well, hey now. You know, Ryan, you, you asked Dawn a question about Camilla Cordoso and where her status was, and I thought she gave a great answer. She said she needs Camilla to advance to get to where she can be a replacement for Leah Boston. Right. When Boston's gone, and she said, look, the clock is ticking, and you're not taking advantage of that time. It's time to go. There's so much more that you can do here. You came to this program for a reason. You want to take advantage. Yeah, she said it was a business decision. Right, right. This is a business decision to come here. You want to be the number one pick in 2024. Yep, time's ticking. It's time to start working towards that goal. Largest deficit that Ole Miss has faced this season. Foul called against Rivers. And free throws here for Zanetta Johnson. Yeah, this is a tough going for Ole Miss here in Columbia, South Carolina. But these two teams, they play again later in the season. And I think as the Rebels continue, to improve. This is a learning experience. You come into an arena, there's what, eight, 9,000 yeah. people here. This is the largest fan ba base that they have played in front of. And now they know what it feels like to play the number one team in the country. You've got to get a taste of that with the improvement they've already made. Let's say the next meeting, it's going to get a little more interesting and that evolution will continue to happen. Shakira Austin back in for Ole Miss. She has 15 points, the lone rebel in double figures. Russell bangs it up too strong. Cardoso able to flag it down. Second attempt won't go for Russell. Here comes Johnson. Ole Miss as won the turnover battle in every game this season, but unless something changes, that will not be the case tonight. A jump ball. It has been all South Carolina this evening. A 22-point fourth quarter lead. South Carolina, 59-37 lead over Ole Miss, 438 to go in the fourth quarter. By the way, Malia Boston, Finishes with 12 rebounds to go with their 22 points and has a name that, yes, rhymes with Austin. Both last names are cities, and we, we totally blew the first names being pop stars. 
These are our fourth quarter nuggets, man. This is why you stick around for the latter part of the fourth quarter. I'm just saying, we, we made incremental progress throughout the day in discovering all the different fun elements of these two stars. We didn't discover the third one, though. No, Harris Fabishoff did. I actually did ask Shakira Austin if when she scores, we have permission to say, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> And well, she said, yes, we do have permission. All right, Holly, so next time she scores, we expect your mic to pop open and you to drop that, okay? Okay, those hips don't lie. Yeah, I was exactly, gonna say, hips exactly. don't lie, that's right. Could see those two linking up in the WNBA in years to come. Austin and Boston. Oh, I thought you meant Austin and Holly. <laughs> Which could happen as well, a little dance party. Yeah. A me here, ooh, how about that finish? Little slide scoopage. South Carolina has been so impressive this season against top 25 opponents. Gonna add another win to their ledger. Last three seasons, they're 30 and six against ranked teams. Hey, there's a great lineup of SEC women's college basketball on Sunday, highlighted by the number one team in the nation, South Carolina at noon. They take on Florida. SEC women's basketball Sunday on SEC Network and the ESPN app. Aaliyah Boston will be going for a 14th straight double-double, and Shakira Austin is done, which means we lose our chance to hear Holly. Florida is sitting fourth in the SEC. It's been a long time since Florida, Ole Miss. Like, these are teams that are in the top half of the SEC. I was talking to Gary Blair about the competition in the SEC, and he said the top echelon is the top echelon. It's the bottom half that has improved and gotten better. Four to one, four in a row now, right? Yeah. LSU having a really nice season as well. South Carolina going to go even deeper into the bench as we hear the applause for all those coming onto the floor for the Gamecocks and take another look at those SEC standings. South Carolina with one loss, Ole Miss about to have two. Tennessee atop the conference. And you see the depth behind those schools. And Florida, yeah, 5-2 and two in the conference with a big game coming up against South Carolina on Sunday. So you've got, what was that, eight teams on there that are all in the hunt. You look at Tennessee sitting at the top, undefeated. They haven't even really reached the meat of the schedule. They haven't played LSU. They haven't played South Carolina yet. They still have yet to play um, Missouri. So it's going to get interesting down the stretch in the SEC. And guys, I actually had a chance to do an interview with Kim Mulkey this week, and she was talking about, you know, nobody expected us to do anything at LSU, and there they are sitting in the standings at 5-2. and two. Watch out for the Tigers. Kim Mulkey there, it is going very well for her in her first season back home. Holly, I don't understand. When? When did you have time to have a conversation <laughs> with Kim Mulkey? It's unbelievable. Time traveler, Hermione Granger. That's right. Our very own wizard. But I tell you, she's exactly right about LSU. Kayla Pointer just had 35 points against Florida. You've got Alexis Morris who transferred in, who originally had played for Kim Mulkey or had signed with Kim Mulkey at Baylor and got removed from the team. And Kim Mulkey giving her a second chance and allowing her to come in and play at LSU. You have a chance to win when you have three really good guards and LSU has three really good guards. 2-12 left to go in this fourth quarter. South Carolina going to improve to 9-0 against top 25 teams this season. And if a visiting player misses two consecutive free throws, everyone in attendance wins a free chicken sandwich at this point in the game. Not going to happen. No sandwich for you. <laughs> <laughs> You can always tell when there's the in-arena 
Missed foul shot promotion late in the game. That or if Aaliyah Boston's going to put her double double. That's right. Put back is good. Sonia Fagan with the bucket. All the way in, Anaya Russell cups it home. The McDonald's All-American back in 2020 from Baltimore. Played in 26 games last season as a freshman. You have Hirsch, who's the only freshman that came in in that class. Then you have the number one recruiting class here this year. Next year, that number one recruiting class will be seniors. So a lot of experience with a lot of talented players. And you got to give credit to Jolette Law that is sitting next to Don Staley there. It seems like every staff she's in, she reels in those number one ranked recruiting classes. She did it at Tennessee. She's done it at Rutgers. She's doing it here at South Carolina. There's a lot of talent on that bench, including the number two, or excluding the number two overall recruit this past season, Raven Johnson, who's out for the season. But a lot to reload with for Dawn Staley. Raven is right there, hanging out on the end of the bench. I was so excited to see her play this season. I watched her play in the high school circuit. She was at the Iverson Classic playing on the boys' team. Yeah. Rebecca, we were at NC State early this season. Raven Johnson was thrown right in the mix. Yeah. I've been really impressed today with the depth that Don Staley has. South Carolina team coming in and contributing. Lee Griss said it's huge to have that experience back. Saniya Rivers has been terrific. I'm eager to continue to watch her growth throughout the season because as, as many players as Dawn has had, she hasn't used the depth. Or, yeah. you know, had it been earlier in the season, you know, that North Carolina State game is a good example of that. I mean, these players are starting to really mature. Normally this time of season, that's when the bench starts getting shorter. South Carolina's bench is starting to get a yeah. little longer. Mm. See, I think Saxton was going to use the, the towel the way you're using your jacket right now. It's cold in here. Yeah, it's cold. You don't need to toughen up. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Saxton, by the way, had a really good box out game. These are the kind of things that mean a These lot are, to you. They do. They? I was watching her today. I'm like, she, she didn't get that rebound, but man, that was a really good defensive box out. She had some really nice box outs today. <laughs> You know, that's a good, but a, a, a good recognition because she's a player that normally goes to get the rebound. And understanding how hungry Ole Miss was going to be, that she had to sacrifice what she normally does to do what was best for the team. It's all cosmetic at this point. Final 36 seconds left of this fourth quarter. Ole Miss's previous low when it comes to point total this season was 50. But for Ole Miss, just four assists, 13 turnovers, and South Carolina is going to have a fifth straight game holding opponents under 30% shooting. Yeah, South Carolina just did what they do. They own the glass, and they lock you down defensively. A dominant win for the top team in the nation. South Carolina improves to 9-0 against ranked opponents this season. A 69-40 win for South Carolina. And Aaliyah Boston is standing by with Holly Rowe. Well, Aaliyah, this was a very physical game. They were really being very aggressive with you. How did you keep fighting through that to get your 13th straight double-double? Um, I was just patient. Um, a lot of credit, thank God, but a lot of credit goes to my teammates too because we worked on that all week, just me being patient because I knew it was coming. 
you guys have really started to put it together here at this point in the season. How important was this win in the conference races for you? Oh, it's so important. Every conference game, um, every win is, is important just to continue to keep us high in the standings. And so I'm just glad we got another win. You set the school record for consecutive double doubles. All the greats that have played here, what does it mean to you to be the record holder in that right now? It just, it just feels amazing, and I just thank God for it. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. All right, Aaliyah, Holly. Malia Boston, big performance tonight, 22 points, 12 rebounds as South Carolina victorious yet again, the number one team in the nation with yet another impressive performance. Once again, the final score, South Carolina 69 and Ole Miss 40. Coming up next, it's men's college basketball between Ohio State and Minnesota. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Mike Roy, Holly Rowe, Carolyn Peck, and Rebecca Lobo. I'm Ryan Rucco saying thanks so much for joining us tonight. And good night from Columbia, South Carolina. Another victory, 69-40 the final overall miss. Time to send things out to Brian Custer in Minneapolis.